Good afternoon from Universal Orlando Resort, and I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, Tim, you just put out a Halloween Horror Nights video that was a complete and comprehensive guide. And if you guys haven't seen that, we will put a link to it in the description down below and up in one of the corners here. But the last time that we came to look at Halloween Horror Nights stuff, they were just starting to put out decorations. There are a lot more out inside of Universal Studios because the event is only two weeks away. So let's go inside and see what's new. All right, let's see what kind of terrifying stuff we can find here in Universal Studios, Florida. We are basically just going to follow the same path that we went on when we went through our overview video. So we are headed into the first scare zone area, which is called the Harvest. Yes, pardon their dust. Lots of props out now. So I can imagine there will be people hiding behind these fences jumping out to scare people. Okay, so yeah, I, I mean, this definitely will be the trick-or-treat area, as noted by the pumpkin and the school bus door. I don't know what would be here, but it looks pretty awesome. Are there any lights in it yet? Oh no, somebody left their safety glasses in there. Uh-oh. Oh, okay, there's a mailbox over here. What does this say? Haddonfield, next exit. So that's, uh, that's Halloween 4. I don't know what this mailbox is though, but I love it. But yeah, for the most part, it's just fences out and about. I do think that this is probably my favorite thing about all of these areas here because these particular trusses are not for Halloween Horror Nights. They're for Rock the Universe, a Christian music festival that happens just before Halloween Horror Nights. And the same thing goes for all the lighting and speakers and other fence work that's up here around the Music Plaza stage. That's all for Rock the Universe. As we start to head into New York, we're starting to see these stripy tents over here those are gonna be food and drink locations for Halloween Horror Nights. Theme park pigeon bullying all the smaller birds. What the heck, pigeon? We thought you were cool. And here we go. We are headed into the streets of New York, which is the scare zone Vamp 85. And if you guys remember, this is a vampire themed, well, not vampire themed, but there are vampires at New Year's Eve. And right at the strike of midnight, there is going to be a vampire feeding frenzy. They've got the lighted ball that's gonna drop right at midnight. I love the 80s theming here. This is amazing. And you know, this is a stage and there are large speakers and lights and everything. This is gonna be amazing. This scare zone is gonna be awesome. Ooh, yeah, this kind of looks like, like a band stage. That's kind of in disrepair. You can see some of the lights hanging down. I've got something covered up, which I'm assuming is either like a drum set, a DJ set, some synth set maybe, that'll have like blood or gore all over it. And they've got right here, Booze Nougat in concert featuring Brian Frank and the Superchargers, which actually Brian Frank is a team member that worked on Fast and Furious Supercharge who passed away. So this is like a little tribute to him. Hellcat and the Executioners. Cake and Blanket, which is probably my favorite band name ever. The Delroy Ands and the Four Norsemen. Oh yeah, look, we've already got like microphone stands up here and everything. Yeah, that's a drum kit. Heck yes. This is gonna be amazing. All that I can hope for out of this is that there's gonna be a vampire playing the drums with various body parts that he has ripped off of his victims. Like I said in the overview video, this scare zone is the biggest one in the park. So we are all the way down at the other end of New York and there's still props out here, like this news van over here, WHHN TV. We saw these speakers last year. So these are speakers that hook to any glass and they turn the glass into a speaker. So it's like a, a a resonator speaker or something like that. Uh, yeah, so I would assume that there's going to be like dead body newscasters inside of here or somebody screaming from inside of here. And then I also was thinking in years past, they have lit up or backlit these windows and put projections of scenes happening inside of the windows. So I wouldn't be surprised if one of these windows up here has maybe somebody being attacked by a vampire up in one of these windows here. Not only are there props out and about in the New York streets, but sometimes they have to put props kind of back here and then roll them out during the event. So let's go see what we can see back there. It looks like it's covered with a blue tarp. I don't know what this could be. It looks like some sort of large float and or vehicle. Kind of looks like it's exposed around the back over here. We've got like a purple. Okay, so this might be more for Vamp 85. You've got some like 85 colors. It looks like another stage and you got some microphones up there too. I don't know what this is gonna be. This is exciting though. I think maybe this will be like a 80s vampire hair metal band. That's what I'm hoping for. So, I don't know. I'm feeling really good about Vamp 85. In my mind, and I have absolutely no insight to this whatsoever, but I'm seeing 80s hair metal vampire drummer playing the drums with body parts. I'm seeing an 80s hair metal vampire band that's playing like 
amazing 80s music, maybe like a synth band. Oh, a new wave, a vampire new wave band. This is, this is gonna be amazing. I think that I could probably hang out here all night long. And now we're headed over towards Transformers because as you can see on the right over here, more killer clowns from outer space props are out. We've got some stuff underneath some tarps here. Uh, cocoon body, cotton candy cocoon body, 100% and I love it. Yes, because this is what they were hanging from in the ship. Oh yeah. And I think uh, it may have the ability to wiggle around. Maybe. Yes. 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 I love this. I love it. I love it. I love it. This is amazing. My goodness. Oh, I cannot wait for this scare zone too. Ah, man, this is going to be the year for Halloween Horror Nights, isn't it? I am very hyped up about this year. So if we head this way towards Fast and Furious and Diagon Alley and all that other stuff, there's not much more to see aside from a few food tents. You can see one of the orange ones here. Way off in the distance by Men in Black, there's another orange one over there. And also back down at the Fear Factor stage is of course Academy of Villains. And we'll come to that a little bit later in the video because I think we can see a little bit of the stage work. But I want to go back up towards the front of the park and kind of go through the Chucky scare zone and this Twisted Tradition scare zone. There's a Secret Life of Pets show going on, so we're gonna head all the way to the front of the park and start over again in Hollywood. Here we are back at the front of the park and you can kind of see Minion Mayhem over there. Through that area is the Harvest scare zone. And now we are heading over to the Chucky scare zone, which I am also very excited for. I have a feeling that this year's event is gonna be one of my favorite years. There are so many good things in this park for Halloween Horror Nights. The good guy's doll, he wants to be your best friend. 2018, ages four and up. Speaking of that, one of the questions that we got during our overview video is what is the youngest that they'll allow people to come into Halloween Horror Nights? They don't stop people from coming in. They won't not allow a child to come in. They do suggest 13 and up though, because it is an intense event. There's Daphne, and then Fred's on the other side of the mystery machine too. I wonder if the rest of the gang is out and about somewhere. Here is Chucky's stage. Something else that I just noticed that's pretty interesting is they have security cameras up this year at the stage just to probably prevent people from like getting up there and attacking the doll or something like that because it will be a puppet. I don't know. Behind here there's a whole display that looked like a whole bunch of boxes, good guys boxes and then just one in the center where Chucky will be. And the only other things that are in this scare zone are these large good guy podiums. These are gonna be lit from underneath. I'm sure there will be more during the event, but as of right now, this is it. Heading over towards Twisted Traditions in Central Park. Still looking at this stage. This is for Rock the Universe, not for Halloween Horror Nights. So this will be gone by the time the event starts. And from what I can tell, I don't think there's much more that has been added to this scare zone. Eh, maybe there are a few more things, some barrels, some wheelbarrows, some more pumpkins, of course, stuff like that. Spots for maybe scarecrows to be. There definitely is more stuff in this scare zone, but it's mostly just like pumpkins, corn, uh, dead trees, stuff like that. We still don't know what's underneath this tarp. Like I said before, it will be some sort of gore though. As we said in the overview video, the cinematic celebration, oh, the cinematic, I just fell down off that, be careful. The cinematic celebration will not be happening during Halloween Horror Nights, but they did want to make sure they decorated the entranceway to the area where you would watch. Although cinematic celebration will not be happening during the Halloween Horror Nights event, it will be still happening on dates that the event doesn't happen. So the event usually happens on weekends, usually like a Wednesday through a Sunday or a Thursday through a Sunday. So maybe like a Monday, a Tuesday, they'll still be running the cinematic celebration. I love the smell in here too. It smells like an old barn. I wish I knew what some of this stuff is. What do you guys think this is right here? Maybe an apple core, some sort of apple picker maybe? I don't know. There definitely are lots of little places for characters to hide in this scare zone though and jump out from behind and scare you. Of course, because the only thing down here in kid zone is house entrances, it's still too far off for us to see anything down here. They have put up a uh, drink booth over here though. And a food booth. I think it was drink and food, if I remember from last year. So I didn't include this in the overview video because it wasn't officially announced, but usually in the Springfield area, there is a roaming chainsaw horde. So as you're walking through, it's not an official scare zone, just people with chainsaws chasing guests around. And it's fun, fun to watch. As with videos past, we can't see anything over here for these two sprung tents. I think that they've done a good job of growing out the vegetation here to 
prevent people from seeing in there to see the Horror Night stuff. So I consider myself fairly observant, but there are times that I see things and I'm like, hey, has this always been here? It looks like a temporary sign. And why is it here? Still nothing but a black facade in the Blumhouse area. The sign is really bothering me. Has it always been here? I'm, I'm losing my mind, I feel like. It looks like it's been out for a while, but I haven't ever seen it. I don't know what's going on. They're giving away these special pins for annual pass holders, and this is the line for it right now. Might as well jump in line and grab one. Here's my pin that I got. It says, I don't need a map. Hashtag UOAP. That, of course, is the first in a series of pins. There will be more styles later on in the season. More Halloween Horror Nights food and drink tents over here. And just looking back at the Fear Factor stage for Academy of Villains stuff, I don't know if I can see anything over there. Yeah, it looks like I can't see anything. Got it all roped off. This is as close as I can get. Thought maybe there would be some high elements or something that we could see. Sort of over on the bridge that runs between Springfield and the London waterfront. We've got another drink tent and sometimes they have food over here too. But I also wanted to point out that there is a power cord over here. So maybe there will be another drink tent or food tent over on this side too. This doesn't have anything to do with Halloween Horror Nights, but there is a construction wall up around Richter's. Last time we were here, this construction wall wasn't nearly as far in front of Richter's as it is now. You can still go into Richter's, but this whole area is covered up. It is a pretty darn busy day today. We've made it back around to New York, and I wanted to show you guys this particular food stand has historically been a Halloween Horror Nights staple known as Twisted Taters. Basically, it's just a whole potato put on a stick and twisted like made into a spiral cut potato then deep fried and then they have different spices that they can put on it for you we're back in the new york area which is the vamp 85 scare zone and i just wanted to point out something that i really appreciate about halloween horror nights is this is a van that's supposed to be in new york and it has a new york commercial license plate on it there's no reason for them to put that on there but they did and i love that i'm headed down a little tiny alleyway here across from the palace arcade and this is an alley called Sting Alley. And I thought that maybe it was going to be too small for anything Halloween Horror Nights related this year, but they have wired it for power. So I don't know, maybe there will be something. So there you have it. That was a quick trip out to Universal Studios to check on the updates for Halloween Horror Nights. It is looking like it is going to probably end up being one of my favorite years of the event. The 80s theme looks amazing. The Vamp 85 Scare Zone looks phenomenal. I cannot wait to see it in its final form. The Killer Clowns from Outer Space, again, phenomenal. I can't wait to see it in its final form. I'm excited to see the projection mapping on the buildings around it. As you guys kind of saw, there wasn't a lot of props out, but I have a feeling that the projection mapping is really going to bring that area to life. The other three Scare Zones I'm not too excited for, the Harvest is kind of like an area where you can go and you can get pictures of all of the different characters from the different mazes because you can't take photo or video inside of the mazes. So you kind of got the, the Harvest area where you can go and get pictures of the different characters from the different mazes. Twisted Traditions seems interesting. It doesn't look as exciting as Vamp 85 and Killer Clowns from Outer Space. And as far as Chucky goes, it looks good. I'm excited to see the Chucky puppet, but I am more excited for Vamp 85 and Killer Clowns from Outer Space. So, with that being said, we are off, and we will see you guys tomorrow. And now it's time to pay the price.